It's been a very long time since I last made a video about DaVinci Resolve, but we are finally here and today we are talking about ACES. What ACES actually is, who this ACES is for, what you're supposed to be doing inside of DaVinci Resolve to set those settings for ACES and how you're going to color grade your footage in ACES. We are going to cover all of that. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and continue there. So ACES stands for Academy Color Encoding System, and it is a color management like DaVinci White Gamut. Right now I have a project in here in DaVinci White Gamut. It is Blackmagic RAW footage, and right now it is in DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. And we are going to change it to ACES. So open settings, go to color management and choose ACES. And we have two options in here, ACES CC and ACES CCT. They are pretty similar, but it's going to be very difficult to lift the shadows inside of ACES CC. They're going to continue stretching down below no matter what you do. So we're going to choose ACES CCT because it is easier to work inside of shadows inside of ACES CCT. Now, we have ACES version. I suggest choosing 1.3 and I'm going to explain to you why a little bit later. So we're going to choose ACES 1.3. Now, ACES input transform. We have to specify in here what kind of footage we're throwing in ACES for ACES to understand the data and to interpret it correctly. You can use no input transform if you have footage from different sources, but in this particular case, I have Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. I can specify it, but I can leave it no input transform because ACES is going to look and it's going to understand that it is a raw footage and it's going to take data from it and interpret it correctly. But I'm going to choose Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5 regardless. Now, about this parameter, apply ACES reference gamut compress. To understand what it's doing, we need to talk about color spaces. So let's open a graph that is uh, present inside of Blackmagic Manual, and let's see what it's going to show us. We're going to talk about these color spaces, and we're going to start from the smallest one to the biggest one. This horseshoe shape uh, picture depicts the colors that our eyes are capable of seeing. And we are starting with the smallest color space, which is Rec. 709 this color space, the smallest one, and is designed to be used in monitors and consumer-grade TVs. Now we're moving to the next one, which is P3. It is uh, the color space that is used, for example, in the iPhone. It is a little bit bigger than the Rec. 709. Now, if you're into HDR, this is color space for you, Rec. 2020. It is even bigger than the previous two. Now we're moving to the ACES AP1. This dotted line represents the ACES color space, but it's not the biggest. We still have every white gamut color space, which is even bigger, and the biggest one is Da Vinci white gamut. So what does this parameter uh, do? Apply ACES reference gamut compress. If we put an every white gamut footage inside of ACES color space, we're going to find out that you can see that ACES color space ends right here, but RE White Gamut continues a little further. It means that if we have a really bright and saturated area in these bluish magenta colors, it's not going to fit inside ACES and it's going to distort and to break. To avoid that in the previous versions of ACES, you're going to have to reduce the saturation and the luminance of the color to be able to fit it within the ACES color space. Now you don't have to do that. You can simply click in here, apply ACES reference gamut compress, and ACES is going to do the same thing for you. Now, ACES output transform. At what device we are going to be watching what we have created in here? In my particular case, it is a simple monitor which is capable of displaying on the Rec. 709 color space. So I'm choosing Rec. 709 in here. Now, the next parameter is called process node LUTs in. And you have two options in here. And depending on what kind of LUTs and what kind of footage you have, you're going to have to determine which one you need. But for this particular case, I'm going to leave it as default ACCC AP1 timeline space. And that's it for now. We're going to click Save.
As soon as we click it, our footage is being transformed into more familiar look, like Rec 709 look. And now we can start grading. But controls inside of ACES behave a little bit differently compared to DaVinci White Gamut, for example. Because ACES is a quasi-logarithmic encoding commonly used within color grading systems. And it gives a film-like response to contrast and exposure changes with analog fill. So once you start color grading inside of ACES, you're going to notice that these controls behave just a little bit differently and you have to get used to it to use ACES. So what is it, the advantage of ACES? Why do we use ACES when we have a color space that is much bigger, for example, DaVinci White Gamut? When footages come from different sources, for example, from different cameras and even CGI, it is very difficult to get uniform look within DaVinci White Gamut because every artist was working in the color space of their own. When compared to ACES, ACES is an open source and everyone will be working inside of ACES and the look will be uniform throughout the whole process. That's why ACES has an advantage because it is simply more widespread than DaVinci White Gamut, for example. There are some problems inside of ACES that we have to deal with. The first problem has been dealt with the new version of ACES and apply ACES reference gamut compress. The second problem is applying LUTs. The problem is that the LUT has to be constructed for the ACES color space. And once we open the LUTs uh, folder and we find ACES, we find that there are really no uh, LUTs in here and we have to find them ourselves. If we want to apply a LUT that was originally designed for Rec. 709 footage, we have to do something which is not quite correctly, but it's a workaround that we have to use in order to apply that LUT inside of ACES. We are going to create three nodes. In the first one, we are going to type transform and we are going to use not a regular color space transform, but an ACES transform. I'm going to throw it in here. ACES 1.3, input ACES CCT, output Rec 709. Everything has gone to shed, but we're going to rectify all of that. We're going to throw another ACES transform and choose Rec 709 uh, to ACES CCT. So we've done something that has no effect on our image, but in between we have another node and we're going to apply a regular lot that was originally designed for Rec 709 in between of those. That is not the perfect uh, procedure and it has a, some drawbacks, but it is a procedure that you have to apply in order to work inside of ACES and to apply LUTs that were not originally designed for ACES. Sometimes tracking can be a little bit wonky inside of ACES and you would have to do the same thing to transform it to Rec. 709 to do the tracking and then transform it back to ACES. So these are the drawbacks and the advantages of ACES. The rest of the color grading inside of ACES is not going to differ from the regular color grading process that you are used to. You only have to take into account these workarounds and you have to remember that, well, you need to get used to ACES in terms of controls and how they react. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.